Hi, my name is Callie Nichols, and this is my presentation on the sacred tube. This is an outline of what we'll be talking about in my presentation today. The first thing is surfing in general, second, surfing as religion, third, Bethany Hamilton, and fourth, surfing and healing. So a little introduction to surfing. Surfing is a very interesting sport that varies greatly in intensity. It can be a relaxing activity on a vacation or a highly competitive sport in dangerous ocean waves. Surfing isn't played by a team of players, just one surfer. The way people compete in surfing is that they are scored by the difficulty, speed, and height of the wave, as well as the actions done by the surfer to stay in control. Surfing is seen in many places known for large waves. Even though it isn't a common professional or Olympic sport, it is still extremely hard and requires a lot of skill. The most popular competition in the world is held in Cape Town, Africa, known as the Red Bull Big Wave. Next, we have surfing as religion. Surfing as religion can be broken up into three different categories. The first being a sacred place, second, gender, and third, gifted athletes. For sacred places, we could flash back to the beginning of the course, where Arnold states in his reading, Sacred places are literally the center of the world because they are the sites in which sacred reality has broken into material life, where the sacred manifests itself in the world. An example of sacred places in religion includes churches, temples, places around the world with a strong connection to yourself and your religion. In general, in the beginning of the course, we also watched a film called Monk of Mount High. In the film, I found that the monastery was a prime example of a sacred place. A monastery is a very sacred place for monks and a place of worship. In the film, it is mentioned that monasteries are run like a family business, and I think that adds an even more personal connection. When talking about sacred places and surfing, I found the ocean and one surfboard to be the most perfect examples. For the ocean, it is needed for waves and glory to compete for surfing. Ocean's also a place of practice and where one grows. When a surfer is all alone in the ocean, they have a lot of room for thought and realizations. This is similar to religious sacred places where people go to be alone and at peace with themselves and their own thoughts. Another sacred place for a surfer is the surfboard. I believe a surfboard represents a surfer's backbone. It keeps them balanced and safe while they're in the deep waters of the ocean. They also need their surfboard to glide over obstacles in the ocean. This correlates to religious safe places and sacred places as it makes people feel safe and comforted. It's always a place they can go to feel accepted. In our second category for surfing as a religion, we have gender and surfing. In most religions, men have a superior role in comparison to women. This hierarchy of gender also connects to sport positions and athlete wages. Women in sports have become a lot more popular over the years. Olympics in the past had a strong separation between male and female sports, but current Olympics have now created more gender equality and both genders participate in each sport. As shown on the slide, we have some separations between male and female surfing. Men are paid almost double the amount of money in comparison to women in each competition. And then only 10% of surfers are female. I didn't find this information that shocking because a lot of sports that we learned about in this class have also had problems with male and female equality in their game. When doing some more research, in an article featured in The Atlantic called Why Female Surfers Are Finally Getting Paid Like Their Male Peers, the author states that in 2018, the 36 male surfers on WSL, which means World Surfing League, World Championship Tour were competing for $607,800 in prize money, while the 18 women on our tour competed for only $303,900. That is a $300,000 pay difference between female and male surfers when they're competing the exact same course. It's really frustrating to hear these statistics. Females are performing the same difficulty and level of danger as men. They are also sacrificing their lives to compete at the same level but earn less. It doesn't make sense. But not long after the World Surfing League stated, men and women will be paid equally. Even though equal pay was established, men and women still have differences in the sport. In competitions, men are still given more events than women, and I am hopeful that there will be changes in the future. In the last category of surfing as religion, we have gifted athletes. I believe a gifted athlete is one who uses their given talents, their full potential at each opportunity presented. The key to a gifted athlete is someone who demonstrates talent at all costs and doesn't take it for granted. Gifted athletes are always noticed in a game by how many points one scores and by one skill in the field. I believe everyone can be a gifted athlete, but what makes you stand out is how you show it. When being a gifted athlete, one's expertise is needed in each game to play smart and not sloppy. 
Bethany Hamilton is a perfect example of a gifted athlete. She's extremely talented and was someone who showed extended perseverance in her career through her incident. She was someone who put her blood, sweat, and tears into surfing, literally. Her time training and competing is reflected by her talents in the water. A tragic accident occurred in her career, where she was attacked by a shark and left with the loss of one arm. Her extreme courage to get back in the water only took one month after the accident. She still spent time in the physical therapy to build her strength, but it didn't stop her from continuing what she loves to do. After doing more research about the attack, there are some gruesome details explaining the shark being 13 feet long and 1,500 pounds. The bite mark on Bethany's board was 17 inches long and left her with the loss of her arm at 13 years old. She won the Best Comeback Athlete SB Award in 2004, National Helping Kids Champion in 2005, and World Junior Championships in 2008. Those are just three examples of the large list of awards that Bethany has won throughout her career. She's an athlete who didn't put her talent to waste. She used her gifts as often as possible and never gave up on her career. Lastly, I'd like to discuss a really cool topic that was discussed briefly in class called Surfer's Healing. I divided this slide into who, what, where, when, and why. So for who, Izzy Paskowitz, who is a pro surfer, and his wife, Danielle Paskowitz, are the founders of Surfer's Healing. So what is the point of Surfer's Healing? It was a surfing camp for children with autism. Where and when did it occur? This camp is in California and it started in 1996. And why did they start Surfer's Healing? So bringing the kids in the, in the ocean made them very happy and calmed their nerves. Izzy founded the camp after his son, who was diagnosed with autism, found peace whenever he was in the water with his dad. Surfer's Healing is an amazing organization that brings so much happiness and joy into these children's lives. If you would like to learn more and donate, go to surfershealing.com. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.